So we have looked at how anisotropy in materials can be used to make optical elements that manipulate polarization. We've looked, let's see, we've looked at in real and in imaginary. And we have looked at linear light and circular light. All right, now let's see if we can review what goes where. Let's see, so when you had anisotropy in the imaginary part of the complex index for linear light, that was a polarizer. The effect we just called dichroism. Right? And when you had a difference, an anisotropy in the real part of the index for linear light, that was a phase retarder. And that's birefringence. And then we realized your circular light can have its own index. And it can be anisotropic, anis anisotropic. So when you have anisotropy for the circular light in the N, for the real part, different speeds, that was the rotator that we just talked about. So the question, we haven't done this one. What goes here? What is this here? Is it an optical element? Well, not really. But we can sit here and say what it is. It must be circular dichroism. So what goes here is called circular dichroism. And yes, it is true that you can have materials, due to their uh, chirality, you can absorb one circular light more than the other. You can send them RCP and LCP. One will get slightly absorbed more than the other. <clears throat> the effect is not very strong. So it's not really strong enough to use to sort of make optical elements. It's pretty weak. Uh, but it does exist. And it's actually used as a form of spectroscopy for structural biology. So if you go to a structural biology lab or a biochemistry lab, they ha may have a machine they call the CD. Okay. They will take their sample of bio molecules and run CD on it to see uh, what, what's going on. So if you really want to harass your friend who is a biologist or a biochemist or a structural biologist, ask them if they have a CD in their lab. And if they say yes, then ask them, what does CD stand for? And if they tell you circular dichroism, ask them, what does that mean? Right? And then you can see how far along they get. You know, it might be interesting, even if they have a PhD, even if it's a professor. I would, if it's a professor, I would definitely recommend you go, you go put them through this exercise and see how far along they understand their CD machine. Maybe they all know. I don't know. I just think it would be fun to find out. What the CD tells you is different kinds of protein structures. You have a protein with a lot of alpha helices in it. It gives a certain spectral uh, circular dichroism. And if you have one with a lot of sort of beta sheets in it, it gives a different shape to the circular dichroism. But it's really the circular dichroism is a function of wavelength. So it's sort of a very complicated um, thing. It's really done sort of phenomenologically. And the effect is extremely small, so the CD is very expensive. But let's all go find out if all the biologists know what the CD is. <laughs>